But we began with Chief Washington correspondent James Rosen outside District Court. Good evening, James. Brett, good evening. This is already being described by some media outlets as the worst day yet for the Trump presidency. But in all the action here in federal court today, Donald Trump was far removed from the allegations and confessions that represent the first landmark in the special counsel's investigation. Any reaction, Mr. Manafort? A few hours after former Trump campaign chair Paul Manafort surrendered to the FBI, he and longtime associate Rick Gates appeared before magistrate judge Deborah Robinson in federal district court, where each pleaded not guilty to 12 counts of financial crimes in an indictment unsealed by the Office of Special Counsel Robert Mueller. The indictment alleged that while lobbying for Ukrainian interests from 2006 through 2015, Manafort and Gates laundered $75 million through offshore companies and bank accounts and allegedly took steps as late as February to continue concealing millions in unreported income. The President Donald Trump was correct. There is no evidence that Mr. Manafort or the Trump campaign colluded with the Russian government. The second thing about this indictment that I myself find most ridiculous is a claim that maintaining offshore accounts to bring all your funds into the United States as a scheme to conceal from the United States government is ridiculous. Manafort was released on $10 million bond, Gates $5 million, due for payment if they fail to appear for court proceedings or leave their homes for any reason other than legal or medical appointments or religious worship. Analysts noted that the charges are unrelated to the Russia collusion angle that Mueller's team was originally established to investigate. What the special prosecutor is likely doing here is putting pressure on someone he knows was at the center um, or, or feels like was at the center of this relationship with Russia and use criminal charges as a way of trying to get cooperation from Manafort. Mueller also unsealed a guilty plea entered over three weeks ago by George Papadopoulos, a former foreign policy advisor to the Trump campaign. Questioned by FBI agents one week after the inauguration, Papadopoulos lied about the timing and circumstances under which he made contact with various foreign nationals last year, people he believed to be well-connected inside the Kremlin. He was a relatively junior official, so again, uh, how much closer it brings it to the White House depends on what actually happened. Papadopoulos signed a summary of events that stated the professor told defendant Papadopoulos, as defendant Papadopoulos later described to the FBI, that they, meaning the Russians, have dirt on her, meaning Hillary Clinton. The Russians had emails of Clinton. They have thousands of emails. However, the documents indicate the Trump campaign rebuffed this effort by the Russians working through Papadopoulos to set up a meeting with the candidate himself. An unnamed senior campaign official was quoted in the summary as having emailed a colleague, we need someone to communicate that DT, meaning Donald Trump, is not doing these trips. The president, it's in his best interest, in my view, to ensure that Mueller can wrap this investigation up quickly. Mm. The more this gets dragged out, the more you see people connected to the campaign being brought in for questioning under oath. I spoke this morning with someone who spoke to Paul Manafort on the phone twice on Saturday. And as late as Saturday evening, Manafort didn't believe he was going to be indicted. As for his business associate, Rick Gates, he was represented at the arraignment today by a public defender because according to Gates' attorney, he didn't receive enough advance warning about his indictment to appear with his own attorney. Brett? James Rosen outside the courthouse. James, thank you.